So I was looking at the list of third-party campaign groups registered with Elections Canada for the current federal election campaign. Anyone can campaign in an election, not just the official parties and their official candidates, but certain rules still apply to these so-called third parties too. They're limited in how much money they can spend in any given riding and nationally, and they have to disclose their sources of money too. I mean, without those rules, you could have strange scenarios like an official candidate being limited to say $100,000 in their campaign, but you might have five other groups campaigning against them before him spending much more money. So that's why you have the rules. That scenario I just mentioned is exactly what happened in Ontario's provincial election, where big public sector unions spent millions of dollars attacking Tim Hudak's progressive conservatives, doing liberal Premier Kathleen Wynne's dirty work for her, which she rewarded by giving government unions a pay raise. Well, look at the list here. Fancy that. A majority of the third parties registered in the federal election are government unions. There's the BC Government and Service Employees Union. There's the Canadian Federation of Nurses Unions. There's the Canadian Labour Congress, the Canadian Media Guild. That's a union of 6,000 journalists, by the way, including the CBC and Canadian Press. The reporters you see on TV every night, they're taking their union dues to attack Stephen Harper, by the way. You'd think that every CBC report on the campaign would have a disclaimer disclosing that reporter's conflict of interest. Uh, keep going on the list. There's the Canadian Union of Postal Workers. There's the Canadian Union of Public Employees. There's a Quebec government union. There's the Ontario Government Workers Union and the Public Service Alliance of Canada. And of course, in addition to these unions, there's anti-oil sands lobbyists. There's the Dogwood Initiative, Greenpeace, Council of Canadians, Lead Now. I literally see only one single conservative group on the list, the National Citizens Coalition. The rest are either liberal or NDP repeaters. You can imagine how much money all these left-wing groups would be dumping in the campaign if there weren't these third-party limits. I mean, wouldn't you? If you were a union boss for a public sector union, what would it be worth to you to get Thomas Mulcair or Justin Trudeau in power instead of Stephen Harper? Probably billions of dollars for all your members. Anyways, I want to focus on just one of these third-party groups today. This one, Avaz. It's right near the top there. But take a look at that. Take a look at that. Their head office for their Canadian election campaign is in New York City on Broadway. It's that building there on the corner, 857 Broadway, New York, New York. Looks like a pretty exciting place to have an office. I mean, right in the heart of the Big Apple. Wouldn't you love to work there? That is where the anti-Harper election campaign is headquartered in the United States. Avaz was actually launched with funding from the left-wing U.S. billionaire George Soros. And from New York, they will now coordinate their attacks on Stephen Harper. They're not even laundering their money through Canadian front groups. They're doing it from Broadway. I mean, I mentioned the other groups on the list, Lead Now, Greenpeace, Dogwood, and others. They all receive massive funding from the United States or other countries specifically to attack Canada's oil sands. I mean, the Tides Foundation in San Francisco, just for one example, is, is a source of a lot of the funding to these anti-oil sands groups, millions of dollars a year, uh, with the Rockefeller Brothers Fund in New York too. Greenpeace is a huge multinational lobby group based in Amsterdam. But at least all those groups I just mentioned have a Canadian office to pretend they're Canadian. Avaz is running their anti-Harper Canadian campaign from Manhattan. And Elections Canada is totally cool with that. No problem. U.S. money pays the staff of Avaz. U.S. money pays their rent, U.S. money pays their computers, U.S. money paid to build their databases. How much? Who knows? Maybe it's in the millions, maybe the tens of millions. And Elections Canada is not investigating this. They're accepting this and running with it and certifying it. See, Elections Canada investigations and prosecutions are just reserved for conservatives. Elections Canada is a maitre d', a waiter for foreign anti-Harper campaigners. Oh, and how about our watchdog media? Where are they? Well, I showed you where they are. They're running a third-party anti-Harper campaign themselves. That's the Canadian Media Guild. That's the CBC, Canadian Press, 6,000 Canadian journalists, 
you don't really think that they would report on these other anti-Harper third-party campaigns considering they're running one themselves, do you? But what if one of these third-party campaign groups was, say, the National Rifle Association, the NRA, with a U.S. address, just like a VAS has with U.S. money, coordinated from the U.S., spending money to fight against the Liberals and the NDP in Canada and to support Stephen Harper? Let's say the NRA campaigned in our election because of the gun registry here. What would the media party do then? Well, we don't have to guess. Because you see, a few years ago, the NRA was interested in the Canadian firearms debate. And look at how the CBC went into wartime mode. The NRA isn't just watching the Canadian debate. It's been actively involved in trying to influence the outcome. It's been helping opponents of the registry here for at least 10 years. The infomercial was broadcast in the U.S., but on a channel available in Canada. The NRA footed the entire $100,000 cost of the infomercial. There's no question the NRA has been closely following this latest political jockey. Client says Canadians need to know the role the NRA has played in the debate. NRA's involved? Really? Oh, that makes me very uncomfortable. Are there any laws being broken here? No, we found no indication that anything illegal is afoot. Wow. Except, and you had to pay close attention to get this, except the NRA actually didn't do anything. They didn't campaign. They didn't take out ads or put up signs or door knock or do polls. They didn't come to Canada in any way. They just observed the debate up here from down there. And yet the CBC went absolutely ape over it. How dare those Americans interfere with us? But they weren't interfering. Now, a VAS from New York City itself and a half dozen U.S. funded anti-oil groups, well, you see, that's not news to the CBC or the Canadian press because they're all in it together to defeat Harper. There are only 338 conservative candidates running this election. Same for the Liberals and NDP. So about a thousand candidates from the main parties, plus some green and bloc candidates. But there are 6,000 journalists campaigning through their union in the election all against Harper. They're happy to have some help from New York. But really, compared to the budget that the CBC and the Canadian press have, uh, my friends, that's the most powerful force of all in this election, a permanent campaign group called the Media Party. For the Rebel.media, I'm Ezra Levant.